All right, welcome back, folks. I hope you got a quick two-minute break to stand up and stretch your limbs. We've got our first lightning session speaker for today. He's silent, he's serious, and God, he is sarcastic. Let's welcome on floor Pratish Reshter, the co-founder of Honeycomb. Welcome, Pratish. Hey, hey. Can you see me? Yeah. No, okay. So this is my slide. So I'm not sharing my screen, so. <laughs> hey, I'm Pratish, and this is why you should build things for yourself. So I'm gonna start with a story. Like a couple of years ago, one of my cousins had her final board exams, SLC, SEE. Uh, so I was just normally checking in to see how she was doing, right? And then she sends me this GIF. And it's so funny that it perfectly captures just how miserable she was. Obviously I showed it to my mom and dad uh, and just laughed at her misery like a normal brother would and saved that GIF. So a couple of weeks later, my friends asked me this. So how's work? Pretty normal question. And I reply with the same GIF, but why? Was I unhappy? Was I that miserable? And the same week, I read this in a book. Are you contributing anything useful to this world? Or just banging on a keyboard and coming home to a drunken existence on the weekends? Hmm. Pretty deep, huh? So I had to think for a while. Why did I start programming? Why software engineering, right? And I knew why I used to play a lot of games when I was a kid and basically just wanted to build one for myself. Uh, a very typical story of any programmer actually. So I did make a game six years ago and it was basically a Mario clone. But I remember I was so freaking excited while making this. I wasn't building it to please the clients and not to satisfy any customers, but I was building it for myself and I needed to find that same level of excitement again, right? So then I had a rule that even if I'm working on a nine to five job, I'll always build something on the side, something exciting. It doesn't have to be the best idea ever, but just the randomest of things, but exciting. So for example, I made this stupid VS code extension. Uh, so JavaScript imports are really ugly to look at. So this basically sorts them in a ladder style format and makes it look clean. Yeah, I'm sorry for whoever is still using this, but the point is make anything that's exciting to you at the time. So then I made this absolute flop of a game that was so freaking hard that people could not even get past the first level. And it only had like 100 installs but still again, exciting for me. Then again, I made this random Luffy radio player, which I had to pull it down because I could not keep paying for the server. Again, but still exciting. So after building a lot of stupid random stuff, fortunately, uh, I teamed up with my friends and made something useful. A simple app to help pass your driver's license exam, right? Anyone could have built that. It's so simple, but no one really did at that time. And this originally had, organically had 80,000 downloads. And we were thinking we were going to be rich, famous, successful. Uh, yeah, not really, right? This, this app generated like $400 of revenue through ads in like three years. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Prasant is saying he nearly failed. So sorry for that. <laughs> so you never know, like, but you always need to build things that you find interesting and exciting, right? You never know when you might build something useful, but it still has to be exciting for you. But you might say, hey, working in technology itself is always fun as well, right? There are so many newer technologies right now. Yeah, it kind of is. But instead of trying to solve a problem or creating something, people always talk about things like, Oh, I'm going to use microfront in architecture, use React for login, uh, Angular for sign up. I'll use microservices. One will be in Deno, another will be in Go. My machine learning will be in Python, and then I'll deploy everything in a Kubernetes cluster. I use Flutter for mobile app, and what the hell? I'll also throw in some lambdas just in case and provision everything with Terraform. <sighs> right. 
you know, 80% of people that I've worked with always want to switch projects because it was not exciting enough. It's getting boring. There is nothing to learn anymore, even though it had the latest and greatest technology stack. Why? Because you're not passionate about the thing you're building. Here's a quote by Jeff Bezos. Whatever it is that you want to do, you'll find in life that if you're not passionate about what it is you're working on, you won't be able to stick with it, right? So how does someone be passionate about something? Well, it is said, you just need a sense of purpose that the work you are doing can contribute positively to the society. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay. So now you may ask, do I have a sense of purpose? Well, not really, perhaps. But that's why I try to build random exciting things and hope that some of it might be useful. And that is why me and my friends were building this platform called Honeycomb. Like most of you, I wanted to know what others are doing. How did they become a principal engineer? Why are they making things for no reason? How are they making successful product? And even things like, is it worth getting a master's degree, right? Most people are always living inside a bubble in their companies without knowing what goes on the outside world. And I wanted to know. So we are basically making this for ourselves. And I think uh, this will have very useful information for everyone in the tech industry as well. So join if you have not. And lastly, was it worth spending all that time in these projects? Honestly, um, I wouldn't have all the opportunities that I've had if it weren't for those small side projects. So absolutely. I'm British and this was why you should build things for yourself. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay, okay, awesome. that was stupid. Mm. <laughs> Is there a Q and A session? Uh, no, but I, Pratish, if you want, <laughs> you sure. can follow him on Honeycomb, and you can like um, DM him. He's pretty active, unless he want. He's proactively ignoring Pratis. you. Pratish, Pratish, can you hear me? Yep, yep, yep. I can't wait to be in your pod podcast. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay, I'm next waiting. next podcast with <laughs> Robo Scully, everyone. Okay. Sense of betrayal oh, rises. I have a <laughs> For uh, Pratish, if I may. Oh, no, it's present. <laughs> you should be happy, Pratish, that I'm asking. Okay, so uh, I really like the <clears throat> way you presented everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, uh, I, I could relate a lot because uh, because I switched to programming uh, in a similar fashion where I learned about building things and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, the thing is, like, you know, uh, market where you, once you go out of college and uh join in to a work uh it's very hard to like you know get a sense of all these things uh so what do you suggest to them right because once you're stable and you're uh, doing something then you want to explore stuff and do stuff but when you're out of college when you're looking for a job and doing a, a lot of things and when you're on, on stress so how do you like do stuff like this so what, what do you suggest to them no i would say if you're just starting out you just have to learn everything you can right the first two years are just about learning and not, you know, trying to do something else. But once you get a good internship and go into your first year, second year, everything you want to do is learn and learn. And after two years, after learning that, you will find out that, hey, everything is just the same. It's just run and back and uh, hi. <laughs> and, uh, you know, database and then DevOps. So everything is just the same. It's just a technology that is different. After that point, after you know what everything uh, in tech has, you can then start to try doing different stuff, you know, and not just do the things you are always comfortable in. So there is this thing like uh, once you're comfortable, you don't want to risk that comfortability and then move on. But, you know, until, you know, when you are older and like have kids and like a wife or husband, sorry, but... <laughs> You don't want to take risk at that time. So before you get to that point, I think you really should take risks. I'm sorry if I offended people who are married, but 
Deep down, you know that's true. Sachi. <laughs> All right. All okay. right. That was Pratish Shrestha, co-founder at Honeycomb. Please feel free to go like, um, you know, all of that stuff on their podcast and their Instagram page. Thank you, Pratish. I'll talk to you soon.